Jordan, is there an actual location for the Garden of Eden as it's described in the Old Testament? Many people make, uh, well, you know, many people do presentations about that. So is there a, a an actual location for the fabled Garden of Eden in the Old Testament, Jordan? Uh, I think perhaps there is. I think perhaps there is. But I do believe that that was probably the story of the great flood in the Old Testament, the great flood of Noah's day. I believe that story is actually telling us an old story of the of the story of Atlantis. I believe the Bible is talking about Atlantis when it tells us the story of Noah and the ark and the great flood of of Noah's day because mm-hmm. it says actually in the Bible that the great floodgates of the deep opened up and the land fell into the ocean. The, uh, the floodgates of the of the ocean opened up because we know that rain, scientifically, uh, if it rained 40 days and 40 nights, would not be enough rain to cover the highest mountain. That's not going to possibly happen. You're not going to have that much water on the earth to cover the highest mountain, so it was not a worldwide flood. It was not something that covered the highest mountain on the earth. No. The mountains were caused by some kind of a catastrophe, yes. But it was not the great flood. The great flood was local. It was a local flood. And the idea going back to that when the flood happened, it says the Bible says that not only rained for 40 days and 40 nights, but that the great flood, uh, the great Waters of the deep opened up. It, the idea being that there was some kind of an earthquake where the waters of the deep opened up and the land fell into the opening. Well, that's what we're told happened to Atlantis, that there was a great catastrophe, flood or something, where Atlantis sunk overnight, instantly sunk overnight into the ocean and was gone forever. I believe that that what we're talking about in the book of Genesis is about Atlantis. There's no doubt in my mind about that. Now, if there was a place where Adam and Eve were being created in a garden of paradise, I think there probably was. And most likely that was some kind of a place that was on Atlantis or maybe in, uh, in the Mediterranean somewhere where the extraterrestrials who came here and messed with our DNA and recreated us, they obviously had to take whoever these these creatures were that they were going to operate on and crossbreed with them. They had to put that female into a protective area where the other animals couldn't uh, harm her. And, and because she was going to be given birth to an extraterrestrial birth, and so that's why she was put into some kind of a protective environment, which is exactly what we would do today. If you're going to take one particular animal and you're going to crossbreed with that animal, you would take it out of the herd, out of the group, and put it someplace where it's going to be safe while you work on it, while you work your experiment on it. I think that's exactly what happened with the story of Adam and Eve that somebody came here from out there, off-world entities, came here and saw the indigenous creatures and said, hmm, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture is saying that somebody came here from out there. Well, what's out there? Well, God's out there. Well, maybe God came here and said, come, let us make man in our image, after our likeness. Let's make him look like us. And so then later on the scripture says, God says, here man has become as one of us. He's like us. He looks like us. And he's just like us. And so I think that there was a place in particular Somewhere on the earth, probably in the Atlantic somewhere, on on Atlantis, 
uh, or that's where it would have to be, would be on Atlantis or in somewhere in the Mediterranean where the uh, where that paradise, uh, or that Garden of Eden was mm. actually a real place where uh, the real creatures were being dealt with by extraterrestrials because we now are seeing all kinds of signs that there were extraterrestrials here who came from other planets, who came from other worlds out there in space. And you ask any child if you believe in God, yes, where is God? And he will point out there. So God's out there. Well, what do you mean out there? What is the out there? Well, it's heaven. Well, God's in heaven. That's right. He's out there in the heavens. And, uh, and he came here. And he saw the indigenous creatures that were here, the, the Neanderthal creatures who had evolved here, and said, hmm, come, let us, who's us, more than one, mm-hmm. let us make man in our image, after our likeness. This is what a rabbi told me many years ago, a very high-ranking rabbi, he's still alive today. He told me that uh, it does, the Bible does not say God created man. The Bible says God recreated man. It says in Genesis 128 that God said, Come, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Uh, and then after man was made, it was the, the, com- the commandment was, Go forth and multiply and replenish the earth. And I said to the rabbi, is that a correct translation when it says replenish the earth? Yes, that's exactly what it meant. Well, re, R-E, means do it again. He said, that's exactly right. Hmm. Because uh, there was a great flood in Genesis 6, I think it is, Genesis 6, 1, where after the great flood of Noah's day, when the, when the, uh, when the ark we're told when the ark came to sit on dry land that uh, God said to Noah and his sons and wives, go forth and multiply and replenish the earth. Well, of course. And I, the rabbi said, of course, if God has destroyed all life with the great flood and he wants humans on the earth, he's created the earth for us, right. well, then we're going to have to re R E do again replenish the earth. Not plenish, replenish. <clears throat> and that's why it says in Genesis one when God created Adam and Eve and the uh, and the uh the the word was go forth and replenish the earth again. So therefore Adam and Eve were not the first humans. They were not the first intelligent creatures on the earth. They were a remaking of man. Go forth and remake man again. Right. Let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So it's a remaking of the human family. And so we have now things called, there's a whole study in science of pre-Adamic man. Pre-Adamic means before Adam even was created, there was already man on the earth. So you can say God did not create man. God merely recreated man. He came here and said, do it again. And so right. let us make man in our image, after our likeness. So and now we look like the gods who came here and created us. And right. that's why they, that's why when I hear people saying that they've had, uh, you know, one-on-one confrontations with extraterrestrials who look like humans well that's what makes sense to me because that's what the bible says god said come mm -hmm. let us make man in our image after our likeness not make man no man's already here let's remake him to look like us and be like us 